imagine I'm like, this is the number one way to get 500 million views on YouTube, whatever. The winning formula for a short that gets 23 million views. And my friend was telling me that the Prince of Dubai has these like unique license plates. <laughs> and I was like, that are like worth $11 million. What has been like your biggest revenue month from just basically uploading and conceptualizing content on social media? I think the biggest month, probably like 85, 90 grand a month. There are people that will watch a five hour Andrew Tate podcast and think that they're working. Right. All right, welcome to episode 63 of New Money Talks. That's perfect. Yeah. All the money. We got the man, the myth, I'm, I'm the legend. Bro. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Ram Raviv. Good to have you. Nice to meet you. So you got the whoop on. We'll get yes. into that and all the biohacking in a bit. But I want to, uh, you know, introduce you as the guy who's done a lot of things. But now you're in more of like the content and the social media space. Um, I call them like faceless social channels because it's not like you building your own personal brand per se, yeah. right? So like I might have my YouTube channel where I teach e-commerce and people like know me and associate me for that. Whereas yours are more like entertainment based, you would say. Um, I call them faceless, even though in a lot of them you do show your face. So, so that's that's just what, like what I'm going to call it. But uh, we'll we'll get into the technicalities of what that entails because you've made a good amount of money, um, and a lot of people want to get into that, or they're in the content space and they want to learn what things work, how to hire good people, and I think we're going to cover all of that uh, in addition to some biohacking and how you can be in the best position to run a good business. Um, so yeah, why don't we start with uh, you talking about. I don't want to go too much into like, oh, you know, my parents, my high yeah. school, this and that. But like in 60 seconds or less, you know, who are who are you and why should people listen to you and what can they learn from you? Yeah. So my name is Ram Raviv. I've been doing content since 2018. I ran a podcast production company called Podblade and grew a podcast, was in the top 100 business podcast on Apple Podcasts. Then I ended up uh, just running with the podcast company realized that I like content, but the podcast niche wasn't really it for me. So I decided to run my own YouTube channel and that ended up doing really well with shorts and TikTok and all that stuff. Started getting tons of views, tons of momentum, um, and then started running some other sorts of channels um, on YouTube, TikTok, and, and all that. So it's all, it's all tangential to social media in some way, shape, or yeah, form. Yeah, you even, you even tried e-commerce for a little bit, and I'm sure you learned a little bit about like this, the paid side of social media marketing, but, yeah. but that's a whole different type of business that has a lot more moving parts. Yeah, I love content. That's the name of the game. It's my middle yeah. name. I don't know anything Big about- Big Gary e Vee guy. Yeah, e-commerce, <laughs> all these ads, products, Amazon. None of that is for me. I'm just a full content guy. I love scripting, analytics. It's just like a puzzle to me. And I just like the concept of digital real estate. So yeah, so, I love So content. pretty much like those little short videos people see on like Reels or yeah. TikTok, you make Snapchat. those. Yeah, that's yeah. me. Yeah, my my uh, bio on Instagram, I just change it to like, I like short form content. Like that. <laughs> that's it. Like that's explaining me in, yeah. in one sentence. I'm curious, how'd you come across this whole world too? Like how'd you like even think to start even like making these little videos? Yeah, so when I was running Podblade, the podcast production company, we were doing things like social media content. We would clip it up. It doesn't look anything like it looks like now. We were doing the uh, white bar on top, the, the square ones mm -hmm. that Gary Vee used to do. And that's what we were doing oh, for yeah, our clients yeah, yeah. back in the day. Where you'd put like the text over that? Yeah, or? I don't think Reels even existed at the time. And so I was running that for a while. So I was always in the space of clipping it up and putting it on you know different social channels. And then... I just kind of wanted to make my own content. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube. Even now, I don't have a Netflix account. I don't have a Hulu account. I don't like the only thing that I watch is YouTube. And it's really cool because I look at it from the angle of a viewer. But I also have like this content brain that like I'm analyzing every second. I'm like, OK, how did he start his video? Like even when I'm just like chilling. So it's like really cool that I have that like dual brain. Like yeah. th there's no turning it off. You know, I'm always thinking about content. I'm curious for a long form podcast like ours, what's a great way to start these things? Yeah, I think a lot of podcasts. Like we, I think we actually suck at that. I think our beginning sucks. Yeah, and you you had a podcast way before we ever had one. And I remember, I think I was you know on one of the episodes oh for a little God. bit. You've gotten people like Grant you Cardone. On one of the episodes? I think so. And, <laughs> That's and, funny. and he, he, like, he got guys like Grant Cardone on it. And, you know, a lot like even Alex Ramosi, he said this. I was on a pod. He, he said, I was on a podcast with a guy who was way smaller than a lot of the people that request for me to be on a podcast because yeah. I see how much like, research he does on you know they do on guests and i knew that it was going to be a good conversation regardless of like the size of the podcast 
And a lot of people, they start, oh, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background story. Um, yeah. yeah how, how did you usually start yours? And, and maybe it wasn't the way that you'd recommend it now. How would you recommend yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, this was before I knew a lot about content. I was honestly just, I ran my podcast to just call it a collection of mentorship calls. Mm. So I was in, I, I was 18. I just graduated high school and I was like, how do I get in touch with these Grant Cardones, the Lauren Tickners, the, all these really crazy people that charge $10,000 an hour. And I'm like, I can't afford that, but I want to talk to them and ask them my personal questions. So I just pretty much called it a podcast and just took all these recorded Zoom calls, just put them together and posted them. And that was funny, quote unquote yeah. a podcast. So I just called them like um, packaged mentorship calls. Right, right. Um, and I would just ask my personal questions. Like with Grant Cardone, I wanted to know about his morning routine or what books he reads and all that stuff. Um, but in general, an intro, especially like this that you guys are doing on YouTube, you want to hook them with something that I said or that you guys said that like really stuck out. And a lot of people will just start it off with, hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Yeah. So excited to have you. Today, I woke up and I had two waffles for breakfast. Like nobody <laughs> cares, you yeah. know, like just get into it. Like I'm saying, imagine I'm like, this is the number one way to get 500 million views on YouTube, whatever. You clip that, yeah, yeah. put that in the beginning. And now I don't know what timestamp that is. So I, I almost have to watch the whole thing. And yeah. also you want to know the progression of that stuff. So so we we kind of do that with, so in the final edited video, we have like intro kind of time clips. So we'll take the best, you know, probably 10 sets of three second clips and we'll put in the beginning. So we're going to mention the short that you had that did 23 plus million views. We're going to talk about, you know, maybe it's your highest month, something like that. And then people are going to want to watch the rest of it, of course. Yeah, yeah exactly. But even even after the hook, I think a lot of people still, like you have a minute hook or a 30 second hook and you're like all the crazy stuff I said or whatever. But a lot of people will then go to the, hey, what's up guys? Like right. every second, just, just get rid of it. Just yeah. get rid of it. Like when I'm doing my shorts, like if one word is too long or it's not directly translating into the next sentence, like it doesn't have value. Like yeah, every yeah. word needs to be so calculated because people's attention spans, they just suck. And so you just yeah. have to, you have to really like nitpick every second, especially for long form. For yeah. sure. We, we've been doing that with our short form editors lately. Like before it was kind of like free range. If there was a 30 second timestamp, now it's like, all right, we're going to cut that 30 seconds down to like 27 seconds. And like every half a second, every second matters. Or if there's a good moment of that, we'll put it in the beginning so that it actually has a hook and like a clear formula. But yeah, how, how old are you? I'm 23. Just turned okay. 23 a few days ago. Damn. Happy, happy birthday. Belated Thank birthday. Thank you. 24. This guy's almost 25. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It, I think it's so much of this like short form thing though. Cause like I, I've, I think I've even seen your fucking videos before we yeah, met. Yeah, like yeah. we literally met an hour ago, <laughs> and then I saw your video. I was like, "Fuck, I've seen this before." I'm curious, like, what made you start to uh, do those exact type of like? Cause you could have done like short clips on dogs, cats, fucking like yeah. planes, like music, but you chose to do like, is it not really? It's like news business ish, right? Yeah. Like, how, how'd you pick that niche in so a sense? Honestly, that was just what I was interested in. So I don't really care about cats or dogs and all that stuff. Uh, obviously, I know Kyle for a long time. Like, I just love business and I love content. Yeah. So it's it's the best way to kind of marry the two together. And also, I knew that going back on like what Mr. Beast does, he does a lot of challenges, money. I, I forgot that I read an article and there was like seven key like factors of virality or like seven key like different topics. And it was like money, like pets like uh, like love and intimacy, dogs, and it was like all this stuff, but money was one of them. And I knew that like, okay, I have to make these videos about one of these topics and money was obviously the one that related most to me. And so mm -hmm. I just started ripping it. And a lot of people will talk about like best credit cards, but like, I just knew that if I wanted to get mass appeal, like I would have to do it in a way that relates to them, right? Like I made a bunch of videos, we'll talk about like the Prince of Dubai, like, that he bought this license plate or he bought this wild tiger. Like <laughs> that's what people care about. They don't care, you know, you're saving 0.5% cash back. Like yeah, I, yeah. I'm a nerd for those videos personally, but I know that most people, people don't aren't. care about that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So like when you posted your first video, did you like think it was going to be big? Like, I, I, I'm curious, like that first one you did, like the first few you did, did you spend like hours fucking making this thing and like throwing it up there? Like what was that whole process look like? In a sense? Yeah. So for me, I had found someone i believe on discord through uh do you know uh iman godzi's uh gents croquet club i mm -hmm. saw on your instagram yeah. you were like 
You you bought his NFT or something like yeah, that? Yeah, so I bought yeah, it. Yeah. I bought it a while ago, um, and I met someone on there, and he was talking about I do scripting, I do content, all that stuff. So I talked to him, and it ended up working out really well. He like was like, I'll get on a call for free. He was like 14, 15 at the time. He was but, 15 but years old. He was old? a genius. Damn, really? This, this guy's great. Well, from where? Where's um, this kid from? He's from America. Oh, really? And he was just like. I will teach it to you because I want to provide value in this group and whatever. And so I got on a call with him. We're still friends. <laughs> Shout out 15 yeah. year old. Yeah. yeah. And and he was, he was crushing it. And so he literally, I remember I was in the airport and he was like teaching me. He was like highlighting this part in red. This is the script. This is the hook. This is the rehook. This is the ending. This is how you do the CTAs. And he like taught me everything. And he was already at like hundred thousand, 500,000 subscribers at the time. So um, he was just trying to help another guy out and it ended up really working out. And so I didn't expect the first videos to do well, but they actually did. Really? Because I was looking at, I mean, I know when I first posted them, they weren't as good as they are now, but I put, I was looking back uh, for one of my Instagram stories and the first few videos now are at like 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 500K, 200K. Like they were doing well. I didn't know I was like that good in the beginning, but it like, it turns out like using these different scripting techniques, it actually was that good. Can we go into these scripting techniques? I, I yeah. Talk yeah about what, it. Like, what, you're down. What's the winning formula for a short that gets 23 million views? Yeah. I mean, and he sells this shit for 10 grand. So we're getting it for free right now. <laughs> I'll fuck it with you. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, there's no exact science to it. I would but say. But there is a science. Th yeah, there, yeah. there is a science. Um, I think the biggest thing that a lot of people miss out on is the um everybody talks about the hook and you know you have to make it you know get their attention right away and do all these fancy edits and all that stuff but nobody really talks about like what i call the rehook so a lot of people will say make a crazy statement like the prince of dubai you know his license plate whatever but then they just kind of just keep talking about the story keep talking about it and then they'll say the number or whatever but a lot of people what they miss out on is like we have such lizard brains that I call it that Sorry. even in a 30 second video, you have to rehook them again. So like two hooks, you're saying almost two, like one in the middle to like re-engage. Yeah. Them. Three hooks. Like, like it's, it's that bad. Like it, it's so sad that I have to talk about this, like how our brains work. Manipulate but like, the human brain. Yeah. Like, but like literally you have to be like, but here's where it gets even crazier or it's about mm. to get crazier. So like, listen up or like I'll set, I'll like, I'll start with like a regular statement. Like, um, like he, makes 10 million dollars a year but that's not even the craziest part or like you just ah. have to make a statement to where you have to give them a reason to stay till the end right some people like what i do is like i'll start it with a question or i'll start it with a statement and i'll i'll give that statement at the end but that that itself is not even enough because in that 15 second fluff between the beginning and the reveal you have to you have to say some interesting stuff so that's why like i said every word is carefully documented i'm like okay but how how does the first sentence transition into the sent second sentence does it feel like it there's a pause or does it feel like um, it's like flowing into like almost like one long sentence so like when there's a period you stop boom that's a re like you're giving them an opportunity to leave right but if you don't so don't stop so make run on sentences no not, not even <laughs> that not even that but like even when you're starting your videos like let's say you do a sentence and then instead of just starting it with this guy said this and then start another uh, another sentence. The Prince of Dubai also said whatever. I would just end the sentence and then say, but he also said or like because and like it, some connecting word. Yeah. yeah, there has to be some sort of connection because that hard stop gives them a an second excuse. to leave. You, hmm. you can't. You have. That's why I said so strict on every word, every formation of the sentence. Um, if I'm saying something that's unnecessary, cutting it out. So like this whole. Uh strategizing script how long does this take for like one 15 second video like that dubai one that you made that went viral right with the license plate like tell me that process how long did that take from like I start to finish from when you started to like when you posted that shit like how long did that take yeah so i originally scripted it um and also how'd you even think of the idea too yeah it's so, so my, random i actually went to dubai i think a few months before then and my friend was telling me that the prince of dubai has these like unique license plates <laughs> and i was like that are like worth 11 million dollars i was like there's hype, right? Prince of Dubai. <laughs> That's a perfect clip. Yeah, right? Yeah. There's there's a large monetary value. It, it makes sense. And so that's what I started doing. Um, and I was like, let me just see what I could do. And so I turned it into a, a script. And I really focused on um, creating the contrast, like I was telling you before. 
So you're like, literally sitting down writing this shit down. Yeah, I, I, notes I have it. Like I have it like on a Trello or something, and mm-hmm. I would literally just write it down and I would break it up like every sentence. I would like put like some space so I can like brainstorm and like I would take one sentence and like rewrite it like three or four times Damn. and see how it flows into the next this one. This for like, one video. One video, yeah. It would take me like 30 minutes to an hour. And obviously, as time went on, I started, you know, lowering that and building different templates for myself that I can use. But yeah, I, I would rewrite it a few times. And the hook, I was like, how can I make this something that's interesting? Because the Prince of Dubai spending $11 million. He's a rich guy. That's nothing crazy. Even if they, even if they're staying to find what the end amount is, it's still not that crazy. Yeah. But if I find a way... Where how can I, how can I break people's expectations? So what do I mean by that? Like, if if I have a question, so I made a video about Arizona iced tea, right? And it was like, like the dollar. Iced it was tea. like, how do they keep it a dollar? Interesting, right? So what I did is I had to almost guess what the other person was thinking and immediately refute it. So I'll give you an example. So what I did is I went to my girlfriend and I said, how do you think Arizona keeps their iced tea at 99 cents? She's like, oh, they probably use cheap materials or they probably, or the drink quality is probably terrible. So then in the, in the second sentence, I said, you're probably thinking that they use cheap materials, but it's actually a lot crazier than that. And now they're like, like what the how did he, fuck? he just read my mind. <laughs> How did he know that I was thinking they use cheap materials? And so you almost have to guess what they're doing and then refute it because if not, you're like, if you're just saying they, the print, um, whatever, the Arizona iced tea is 99 cents and you won't believe why. They're like, they probably use cheap materials. And they're like, I don't need to watch this video because I already, I already know. know that they're going to use the cheap materials. So, yeah. so what do you say after that? Like, why, why is it a dollar? Right. So you have to, <laughs> you have to find a reason why like you have to find a supplemental reason that's the actual reason and then find a reason that's believable enough that they were thinking about it that's yeah. so, so that's why it, that's why it's you i can't do a script for everything because if the answer is so obvious there's no script because like you, you have to get a little creative with with what you do and that's just one example there's other ways of like creating different contrasts but the the actual answer to that was um they don't spend a lot of money on on ads at all and and <laughs> so simple there's there's like yeah. some bullshit there's like a, a few other things as well i forgot but yeah that that and like they did something like gatorade spends a lot of money on ads but they don't so that's how they can afford it and right whatever so is this like your career in a sense does it right now like Social i know obviously media. you're 23 but like is this like when, when you meet somebody are you like yeah i make like short content videos short form content videos yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, like, especially to my parents. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. <laughs> like, showing my grandma these videos, she's like, wow, like, she's what like, do you do? Congrats. Like, how do you make money? I'm like, yeah, you know, there's AdSense and there's all this stuff. And so, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, and obviously, my own channel is not the only channel that I work on. I have other channels, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I this is the direction I want to go, whether it's consulting, uh, creating like a coaching program, just running more of these channels this is the direction that i, that I want did, to be did you in. go to college or no i did actually yeah i graduated um where'd you go from baru college nice. in the city um i i don't know if we could put this in whatever but i would not have graduated if it wasn't for my vas um <laughs> because, i wouldn't be able to put that in while they were doing your homework n- yeah no nah, mm. i don't i don't want them to take, <laughs> take, nah, take my degree out or something I'm sure you're fine. but yeah but it was it was during covid and like they uh they didn't require cameras for my school to take tests. And so mm. I was like, Upwork.com, who knows how to do quantitative analysis on That's spreadsheets. That's so smart. I did it. And it was crazy because I had a group project one time and and one of the, the people texted me. She's like, hey, can you help me with this part? And I'm like, yo, I can't help her because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I just like ignored her and I was like, hopefully she just... Pre- forgets like, about, uh, forgets it, yeah. about it doesn't talk to me and so like i hit her up like an hour before it was due i was like oh my gosh i'm so sorry like i didn't see your message she's like don't worry i figured it out i'm like thank <laughs> the lord i'm like yeah so that's really the only way i i pretty much had a full ride um so it was it was simple for me but yeah it was uh it was a wild time but i did end up graduating and, and the whole time you're doing this content stuff though Well, at that time, it was more about the podcast and about the podcast production company. But I was working on my own business since I was 18. There wasn't really anything else. For sure. I'm curious what the business piece behind all this like short form content is. Like, how do you you make money? 
Yeah. So most of it um, is is AdSense, right? I mean, TikTok has the new creator program, creativity program beta that I've been testing out a lot, like using clips of like Kai Sanat and mm -hmm. uh, there was Fousey at the time and you just make them one minute and then there's a few like AI things. Wait, you say can this do. again. You said Fousey, what the hell is all you know, this like shit? Like too. Yeah. So, so what a lot of people, I, I haven't gone too deep into this, but what a lot of people are doing is they're taking uh, clips of Aiden Ross. Celebrities. Celebrities. Okay. And they're putting them into like a one minute clip, one minute and one second clip because TikTok has a new program that they pay you a dollar, around a dollar CPM for every thousand views, obviously. Yeah. And the content has to be original, but there are ways that you can like Finesse go around. Yeah. It. Yeah. So like some people will literally just add like a square of themselves on the corner huh, so and it'll, it's it'll look like a reaction, ah. but it's literally just them. And, it, and they use the same 30 second clip for all of their, their videos. That's so smart. And so they just, and like, it's not as like strict as something like, let's say YouTube or Snapchat or something like that, where they're more like strict like they just have probably some sort of robot or AI that detects it. So there are ways to go around it. Yeah. Um, I haven't played too much around it to be honest, but I know like that's definitely a big way that a lot of people are making money right it's, now. It's like sure. finding the trends and like the loopholes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Bit. I saw this, this crazy thing that this guy was talking about. You pretty much, <clears throat> there's a thing called generative AI yep. in Photoshop. And what you would do is you would drag, you would like screenshot the, the picture. So there's like two black bars you drag it into Photoshop and just highlight it and say, fill this in with the with the rest as if it was in the shot. And then you would drag that generated image back onto the overlay of the clip. And it would look like like you just created this new background. And the AI or whatever TikTok thing, like they would count it as original. Mm. And I don't know if they still count it like that. You probably have to get more You can creative. do that with video? No, so it does it. So you mostly have to use videos that have the same background that are not like moving. Right. So like a lot of these streamers, they stay in the same scene. Oh, I see. So it's, so it's like an image, but it's not it's an image. It's an image, but it looks like it's just part of And you of can the like extend the outer parts right. just with AI. Right. But at, like if, if you're moving around, it doesn't work because the, it has to look like it blends. Yeah, so it has yeah. to be a still video. But you could do it like I did it with Fusi when he was like raging in his room or something like that. Like to put the top and the bottom. He was moving around, but the background wasn't. So right. I was able to use it. Speaking of like these weird names, have you guys seen that one guy who's like talking to Nelk a lot lately? He's like he's like this like weird guy with like glasses and shit like that. Small guy. Fuck, what the hell's his name? And he's like he's like big on uh kick right now. He's like a kick streamer. Oh, oh, oh uh, Neon. Little Indian Neon. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. fuck is that? Yeah. Like what is that? <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys know what the fuck that is? Like, who he's is just he? He's like a streamer, right? Yeah, he pretty much, uh, I think he was. <laughs> That's so funny. Once I said little guy on kick, you're like, oh, yeah. Neon. <laughs> yeah, no, he. I pretty, I'm sure he's um like boys with Aiden Ross. And I think he was starting to stream and then Aiden kind of put him on a little bit to kick. I think he got him a contract. And then he really started growing from there with all the foozy stuff, hung out with him. Um, and now he's just, he's just crushing it. So are they, are, they, are they gaming on fucking kick? No. What are they doing? Just talking? Yeah. Just talking. They're, they're just, uh, I don't know if you know the guy, Jack Doherty. Jack yeah, Doherty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a little, he, little short kid. Sam Jacobs' brother was talking about him. Yeah. So he'll just go and he'll just like record like his day. He'll do vlogs and like he'll be like streaming on kick while he does that. He'll go to like crazy parties and. That's just his like, life just, pretty much. Yeah. And people love watching this crap. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally watched Fousey when he was going through his mental breakdowns. Like, it was it was crazy. Like, when he was in his hotel room and he got arrested, like... You would watch the actual stream or just, like, the short no, film No, no, the, the stream. Because it was, like, live. Like, it, like as it's happening. Like, I didn't go on it for hours, yeah, but, like, yeah. I can but see... But you on it for an hour. <laughs> I, I can see how there there's an, there's an audience for it. Like, yeah. this dude's in his hotel room and the cops are called and it's like, it's like you're watching a live movie. And you, you think you know, it's real? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much of it, but... I mean, Fousey's not online right now, so I'm assuming, but he's I, not all there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what is. But even if it's not real, like it's live, it's happening right now. It's like you know you're gonna see these clips like later, so like you're almost getting the inside yeah, scoop yeah. before it happens. So I, I see that the potential in it. I see the hype, um, and it's cool to study that to see how like content evolves. It's kind of wild because they make so much money just acting like idiots on camera. Yeah, and it's all streaming you, is all these guys that look like they're these idiots running around they're, they're so bro <laughs> they are so smart they are some of the smartest people you'll ever meet like if you actually talk to them they're like yeah i got these 10 rental properties here i bought the, like all the cars they like tax right off the crap out of them you know they 
figured out all their LLCs in Wyoming and like all these credit cards. Like they're smart. They're, it's just a character just to show. Um, well, that's their business. Like their business is yeah, literally that. Yeah. So like, they have to be good at it or else they'd have no business. Yeah, no, but a lot of them like from when you see them you think oh these guys just blow all their money and they're just these drunk idiots but they're not like it's their business it's calculated. But they could very easily if that was their real personality they could have very well just spent all Lost their money it all. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they don't and you just don't see that behind the scenes have you hung out with some of these guys no not really um not not really any of the big ones, but I've, I've definitely talked to, like, a few of them. Before. Yeah, like, online and stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like yeah. everyone talks online to, like, on Discord, like, in the DMs and stuff yeah. like that. You, lo- you learn a whole bunch from these fucking people, oh, yeah. you know? Discord is great. Discord is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of people are listening, and they, they have no idea about the whole content world, short-form monetization and stuff. Like, they might have an e-commerce business, for example, or they have a, an agency. And, and content is universal with any yeah, business. 100%. Like, if you've read, uh, have you read Alex Ramosi's uh, $100 million sale? Yeah. Not, what uh, is it? Not leads, offer. leads, leads. No, I read the There's offers. offers. Read There's also leads. I would look into leads because that's yeah. very applicable to what you're doing because yeah. it's it's the same thing, right? It's you, you either have to go out and you have to reach out to people to see your stuff, which you can't really do with content, or you have to make content where it's like inbound and they're all coming to you. And so like even even an e-commerce business who wants to position an ad, what you just said about the rehooking. Nobody does that. Everyone just talks about, let me have the hook. Let me have the angle. Let me have the call to action. But they should be thinking, let me have the hook, the angle, and then rehook and then like yeah. dive into this. So for example, let's say I'm selling like a weight loss supplement that I'm like, if you're trying to lose weight, do this. But but also this is going to help you achieve yeah. why, right? And, you know, like kind of just value stacking it's almost. Like, but if you thought losing 100 pounds is crazy, like imagine losing 100 pounds while eating all the all your favorite that foods. That you want. Yeah, now yeah, it's like, yeah. Like, everybody's saying just i can help you lose 100 pounds like there's nothing new about that yeah and like they'll watch the ad for 10 seconds okay another guy telling me to lose 100 pounds right like while eating foods like this mcdonald's burger whatever and it's like he used this keto diet whatever like you just have to get creative with it i think a lot yeah. of people are just they're just reading off a script teleprompter or whatever and it's, it's just boring honestly yeah. So, and social media is like inarguably is probably the best way to grow any business, at least direct to consumer. Like if you're brick and mortar, sure, but 90% of businesses now have some type of online footprint and presence. Yeah. So you got to be on there knowing the ways, having that integrated. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, like, can these videos like drive traffic to places? Like, I know you said you something with Morning Brew. You're talking about like just a few things with Morning Brew. Like, I'm curious why you haven't tried to build like a media piece to this. I, I did try. Okay. Um, so I tried uh, creating a, a website called moremillions.com. I think I showed you. I think it was like a link. Yeah, yeah. And what happened to that? Yeah. So what I started doing was I started creating blog posts from the YouTube shorts. Like written blog or like video? Yeah. Okay, written. So I would do like... Um, I did a video about like how Oreos were invented or like how Oreo has like some secret warehouse or something like that. <laughs> and then- Do they actually? Yeah, there was like something, all the all the stories obviously are, are true. So like something about them, I forgot they have like some in like Antarctica or something. They have like a vault for like if the world ever- it's Like, like a recipe was, or some shit. Was, yeah, yeah. It was like a marketing stunt, but it was like, it actually happened. So yeah. like I made a video about it and then I was like, okay- how do I turn this into more of like a long-term business? So I, I made, I hired someone and they made like a, a three, 400 word blog post using like fifth grade reading level, like a lot of spaces, a lot of pretty pictures For and sure. just did that. And so I did pretty decently. Um, I kind of focused off of it a little bit um, and focused more on the content itself, but I definitely think I'm going to so get people back people were going that. from the video to the website. Yeah. So I would pin the link in the YouTube short or in the TikTok. And TikTok would be in the bio actually, but for YouTube, you could pin it at the time and it would be like for the full story, click here. And it was- Is that clickable, that link? I don't know if it is now. When I was doing it, it was. It would take you straight to the website. Um, And then we would just put ads. And I think I was thinking too short term on it because I was like literally plastering it with ads. Like Google Google AdSense? Yeah, yeah. I I plastered, like I regret doing that because I wanted to build a, I should have been focused on building a brand. But yeah, so it, um, it it converted pretty decently. I think if I went harder, it would have done a little bit better. But there's someone who's doing this really well, and his name is Henry Belcaster. Okay. He makes the craziest shorts you'll probably ever see in your life. Um, they're like fully animated, really cool videos. And what he did, he didn't make a blog, but he was like, how do I bring the audience onto something that I can monetize? And so he made a newsletter 
but it doesn't really feel like a newsletter. It's called smartnonsense.com. And when you go on it, like it, there's just like an, a bar to put your email. And it's like the, he makes like these really cool animations. And the newsletter is like, a, it, they call it a comic book for nerds. Okay. And so they'll send you an email and the email will have like pictures of like these, like literally like a comic book and like first he did this then he, and like Shit. show different action Just stuff. Spending time and money. It's a lot yeah. of time and a lot of money, but it's really insane how he's able to do that. But like, that's like a really cool. Like, and then how do you monetize this thing though? Like you selling ads on there? Yeah. I mean, there's play, there's platforms like beehive okay, yeah, um, yeah. and other things like that. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. The you can, newsletter. Yeah. You can monetize it. I mean, you could also, it's a sellable business. You know, a YouTube channel of myself or, or Henry at that time just recording stuff. It's not really sellable. It's not. You know, you, you can't like, hey, like Mr. Beast, like you can't really exit. You still have to be in the business. Um, and also like a lot of these companies it, that are looking to buy, you know, some of these smaller content companies, they won't buy if it's just a YouTube channel or just TikTok. Because if the algorithm stops liking you or if YouTube shuts you down, all their money, the it's VC gone. money that they spend is done. So, so what are they looking for? They're like, looking for tangible assets. Like newsletters, email A newsletter, lists. an email list, website traffic, blog, whatever. All that good stuff. Or even if you have your own website, like YouTube or whatever, where you put your content in, even something like that. But they just need something external that you own or control. Interesting. No, because I think like we're talking about that one I think called Our Future. That's the one. Yeah. Like they figured something out. I think the videos are kind of similar where it's like, not like the last little different, but like similar concept, like really short 20 second videos. And like they were pushing it to, I think a website or something like that. And then Morning Brew acquired them. Yeah. Um, so I feel like they would acquire something like your media. I don't even know what you want to call it. Conglomerate yeah, together. Company, yeah. Right. Like uh, where you have like the Instagram, the TikTok, the YouTube, all of it. But driving traffic to a certain place, you know? Yeah. I think a lot of people, uh, the creators are like really small minded when it comes to building a long term business. A lot of them will be like, hey, got a few thousand for a brand deal or yeah, getting yeah, this yeah. five cent RPM on YouTube. It's like that's that's just a short game. That should be like ten percent of what you're doing, you know? Like you wanna focus on obviously getting the traffic in the first place, but then how do I bring it to Logan Paul's Prime, Mr. Beast Feastables, for the sure. newsletter? um a course uh, info product like how are you bringing that in and that's where you start to make the the real money 100 percent. yeah i think it's always like you have to have like you build that traffic but then you have to have like an offer that like kind of fits yeah. fits that I, I feel like the i don't you tell me is there a problem that like your thing is so wide of an audience because like anybody could listen to like the king of dubai with his license right. plate like what the fuck do you sell it's after really that niche down. yeah i i think that's that's the biggest problem, but it is a trade-off, right? I'm trading the mass approach versus the niche. Like Mr. Beast sells chocolate bars. Anyone can eat a chocolate bar. That's true. And everyone does eat a chocolate bar. And so like, yes, you can, the, the riches are in the niches. And if I made my whole channel about best credit cards and get this auto loan or whatever, like, go viral, though. I, I could do that. And maybe I could make even more money doing that. I'm just not interested in that. That's not like... It's not as there's not like this the scripting entertainment. Pretty much, you could just stack a whole bunch of those like like crypto, credit cards, like I could bank e accounts, like I could rip insurance, that. like I could rip that. All yeah. those, yeah, 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 yeah. I get whatever Geico, State Farm, twenty grand. Chase. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, it would it would be so easy. But for me personally, like I'm not interested in making that content. You know, there are people that do those finance videos where it's like one person's here and then like they flip the camera and they're like, hey, what do you mean? Yeah, you get it yeah. for $5. And I'm like, <laughs> and then what they do is like, they'll put like a wig on and they'll be like, no, I, I like this one But better. it's one person the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. personally, funny. like, you know, if it works and makes a lot of money, go for it. Personally, yeah. that's not the game I want to play. I'm just not interested in it. For sure. Yeah. I, I got a little bit of a personal question. So to for the audience that is, that wants to quantify how good you are, what you do, because I want them to listen. What has been like your biggest revenue month from just basically uploading and conceptualizing content on social media i think the biggest month probably like 85 90 grand a month <sighs> with like no cost and that's, yeah, that, high that's, margins. that's, that's the that's the best part because <laughs> yeah. like there's no there's no margins um there's no overhead i don't have a warehouse i literally go to work i go to a starbucks type on the computer do yeah. my fancy <laughs> stuff then go home like i had an office i just didn't need it do at home recording i'll just record in my room 
um, and all the, the other channels and all the other stuff that I run will just be through um, VAs and all that good stuff. So yeah, it's, it's really crazy. Like I'm, I'm so grateful to be in, in a business model where like, there's no, none of these like big, big, like headaches of like office space and like trucking and all like, oh my God. Yeah. It would be a nightmare. Yeah, like he deals with like logistic stuff and you got to worry about the inventory oh and the God. people and the liability, yeah, all that fun business. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. No, it's yeah. all digital. Like it's digital real estate. Yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, obviously it's not perfect. It does have its own problems with a lot, everything does. VAs like, being yeah, laid yeah. and the, up, the videos don't get views and you got to start doing all that. But I just like that it's online right here. I came to New York for like five or six days, just have my computer. Everything is good. Nothing I, changes. I can go to China. I can go to whatever. As long as I have internet. But like like day, day to day, what are you doing every single day? Do you do yeah. anything or like not even? No, I did. <laughs> do you do anything? <laughs> like actually? Yeah. So you could say no. I do shit. <laughs> no, uh, a lot of what I do is um, is obviously managing the team. Uh, I also haven't gotten. I haven't been doing my own content for a while. I've been kind of reposting, but I want to get back into that. So scripting those, recording those, all that good stuff would probably be my next focus. And then obviously, um, make sure the content's doing well, right? So I could have the best systems in the world, best VAs. But if the videos randomly start tanking, like I need to go in and assess why. I can't just say, hey, keep going, you know, because they're just going to keep yeah, failing. Yeah. So I have to I have to have the visionary to kind of like, and the, the confidence to go, let's 360 or whatever, 180, and just change the whole strategy that we're doing. And a lot of people... Like I have my good friend, he's the operator, right? I'll tell him, let's try this. Let's try this post here, this post here, change this watch time, change this, 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 and like try it. But like, and if I tell him that, he'll he'll do it. Everything I say step by step. But if like in two weeks from now, the videos start flopping, he won't know what to do. He won't have it in him to start like hypothesizing what could be going wrong. And so that's why you really do like, I know a lot of the big business people say you need a visionary and an operator and that's how you really yeah, make it work. Yeah, 100%. I yeah, agree yeah. with that. Yeah, what were you about to say? Yeah, um, so a lot of people know that you need to upload content, especially if you have a business and you wanna drive 100%. traffic to that business, but not a lot of people know how to effectively repurpose content. And I think that's a huge thing because you can make one video and re repurpose it on five, six different platforms. You can repurpose long form videos into short form. What are some of the most effective things that you guys have been able to do to repurpose? Whether it's like formatting, you know, an Instagram thumbnail for a video on Instagram, changing the hook on a TikTok. Like, what does that look like? What does your process look like there? Surprisingly, the the most that I do when it comes to repurposing is actually just reposting. I think a lot of people like overthink that and they're like, oh my God, I need to like post it to like 10 different You're just platforms. just posting the same video. The, like literally. Same caption, just, everything, just posting. I mean, again. maybe you change the caption a little shit. bit, yeah, but yeah. like. A lot of people think that like, okay, I made an Instagram post or I made a TikTok and like, okay, now I got to just start scrambling to make a new one. But like you just built yourself like a digital asset that you can literally post a hundred times. Makes no difference. And every time it can get you new views, new subscribers, whatever. Like obviously you don't want to overdo it and you want to kind of mix Space the old. It out a little. Yeah, mix the old with the new. But like I have a video that got me like 23 million views on TikTok and 23 million views on YouTube. I didn't do anything. It's the same video, same exact concept. Um, and, you know, repost it. Obviously, it's not going to do as well. But hey, if you get an extra one, two, three million. It's a big deal. I'm not complaining. Like some, like most people don't get that on their new videos. Yeah. You know, so it's like, that's why I also focus so much on making high quality scripts because I know that that itself is an asset, right? Like I'd rather spend a good, like an hour on one script than making five scripts that are okay because I know in the end, if it gets number one, obviously quality, it'll just get way more views exponentially. But also like that itself is a timeless asset. And with the content I'm making, it's evergreen, right? So I'm not doing yeah. new stuff. So that Prince of Dubai video, this is good for I could post it today. And it, yeah. even if it gets, even if it gets 500,000, even if it gets 100,000 views, that's 100,000 views that I didn't have before. And I literally didn't have to work for it. You did nothing. Yeah. I could have a VA, give her two bucks to post it. Yeah. It's free, but so many people like are just trying to like scramble to make new videos all the time, but they have, it's like, just, just look at what you have already. Like n so many people don't take that step back. Just, saying, just post them again. Yeah. 100%. On the same account. Same account. So, Who cares? <laughs> so we, we've, 
we've actually taken old videos and tried reposting them on other accounts. And usually the videos or the views get suppressed or the entire account gets suppressed just because the algorithm has seen it before. Are there anything, that you, any, is there anything that you do to the video to prevent that from happening? Um, I would definitely say the caption could be something that you could change. Um, are you doing it across multiple accounts or just on the same account? Different account. Different accounts. I haven't played around with that. I think that might be a little bit Cause then spammy. Because if it's the same video, but like you own both accounts, they won't know if you're like plagiarizing that's, yourself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like some people, like if you post on other accounts, it, like there are a lot of people that repost my content, right. like literally one for one. So how does YouTube know whether to reward them or not? And they're just going to say, okay, we saw it already. It's a spam. But if you do it on the same one, it's probably a little bit easier. So well, should we just get. repost the same fucking videos? Why not? Same video, same content. And that's what I've been doing for the past like few months. I've just been reposting my content. Um, I wasn't careful with it. You have to be a little bit careful with it and like mix new stuff in. I just wanted to see what I could do if I just reposted the old stuff. Fuck and it, it right? kind of like spam. It went to like spam a little bit. So like I have to like. Is this on YouTube or TikTok? You're it's, talking? it's both. Uh, what about did you do Instagram? I, I did Instagram. Some some of the videos actually like do well on repost. Like I think one of them just recently got like a hundred k on a repost. Damn. But again, hey, what, what, what what's here? Are you are you posting on your personal one or another yeah. one? Oh, you are. Yeah. Interesting. Don't. So you're wearing the glasses, doing the scripts on your personal Instagram. Yes. Um. I'm gonna. I'm planning on starting to turn my personal one into more of like an education one, and the YouTube and TikTok will probably be where I build the results to then showcase like again, more there. entertainment based or for what the, the other channels. Yeah. The other channels are going to be like the content you saw yeah. where it's like Prince of Dubai, whatever, all that good stuff. And then like what I'm doing there is I'm also building like case studies. I'm building up my skill set. I'm building up my, my name and my face. Right. So even if, even if someone found me from a Prince of Dubai video, and they're still like a business owner, like they will still like find me f and, and they'll still have like that brand recognition, even if it's not directly correlated. But like, it's not like I'm talking about like e-commerce and then on my personal one, I'm talking about Prince of Dubai. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's related. It's like how I did this. It's like an ecosystem. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's where I want to shift a little bit more into the like education style. And that's why obviously, you know, on here, we'll be able to chop up a bunch of clips. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Build yeah, that yeah, up, yeah. But I'm curious, like with this type of video, like this long form podcast, what our team chooses as like clips and what you would choose as a clip. I feel like you choose a lot better clips. Yeah, we'll have like we'll have uh we'll have, have them you fucking choose some <laughs> and then we'll have you choose some and then we'll compare because we because yeah. it's funny because we'll have like sometimes we'll have editors that send us free content. And for those of you that do, we really appreciate it. We have like some great editors right now that it's gonna be tough for you to like replace them. <laughs> but when we get those, there'll be new timestamps that our our current editors didn't see because there's just so many opportunities. And, but they'll be fire shorts. Like they'll be really good timestamps, really good videos. And missing that could be the difference between missing out on a million viewed video or 10 million views. Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, that's not the content that I've done in the past. Like I've had the podcast and I've cut it up, but I wasn't really good at the time. So my VAs were just chopping up random times, whatever sounded good. Um, what I would say though, there are a lot of AI tools that do that now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've checked those out. Um, maybe we, you, you think can... they're any good though? Like, I think. I think they have potential. I mean, you could you could try it out. I mean, you could even do that comparison as well and see what happens. That's true. You could do both. And worst case scenario is like you just give them the, the best. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What, what's one of the AI tools? I'm curious. I think it's called Op Opus? Opus Pro. Yeah, yeah. Opus we, Pro. We've, we've tried that for so Opus. They don't actually find the timestamps. They'll just they'll pick the timestamps and then edit the video for you. So even I better. I de but I definitely even see the better. value. In, <laughs> I definitely see the value in getting the timestamps because you can like compare that with like what, what the team finds, for example. Yeah, and they also do like a virality score, I think, mm -hmm. which is really cool. But um, I think there's a lot more also because yes, you could find a timestamp, but I I like really like micromanage my like seconds. Like a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll actually cut off the last two to three seconds Uses of my video. Hook. No, so what I'll do is, let's say the Prince of Dubai. I don't know why. I yeah, I saw you. One. You cut the ending. Like, yeah. Why the fuck do you do that? So what I do I is pissed. like, let's say uh, the last part that I'm saying is, it costed him eleven million dollars, right? What I know is that I need to get as close to hundred percent retention as possible. So I know that what is the thing that the person is looking for? They want to know the big number. What is the big number? Okay. So in our brain, we're really smart. 
I know I said we're lizard brain, but like we can like kind of pick up on different patterns. So when I say 11 mil, just by that part, you know the answer. So the Ilian dollars, you're leaving. Because the just from those two words, 11 mil, you are, your brain has is already Check knowing the out. answer. But there's still two seconds left for me to say, Ilian dollar, boom. So I pretty much say, I'm going to cut them off before they can cut me off. Mm. I'm going to beat them to it. That's so funny. Right? I, I know, like, I need to give them the bare minimum so that they get the answer. I'm not saying, like, you know, you just say it and they just never say the answer, right? Say it, but, like, just to show you how every second counts, right? Some people will wait even till the end of the word, right? And between the ill and the ill yin, people can leave then. So if I cut it off, like, if I tell you the word 11 mil, you know what that means. It's 11 million, right? And we're talking about most expensive, so you know it's in dollars right? It's not like 11 million yeah. cookies, right? So say 11 mil, boom. Like, okay, like you already know, you but know what the answer is. That shit forced me to watch the video again. Right. So yeah, then what it funny. does, then what it does, so not only do I catch them before they leave, but they're expecting, just like most people do, to finish the word, right? Because why would I do that? So when I cut it, not only do I catch them before, now they loop the video because it cuts off at a random time. And now I'm over 100% retention. So now yeah. I, I'm cutting them off first for, to where they wouldn't – now they're not leaving and they're watching it again. So it's like they're double. like, wait, did I just miss that? Like, let me – Yeah, they're that like, 11 again. what? Boom. Go again. And <laughs> That's so funny. Listen, is, is, it the most, is, it, is it the most optimal viewer experience? No. Um, and there's there's a lot of things well, like that. You can that. click the link in the, in the description and go see the whole the – Right. And, the, I mean, not, not all of my videos did that. But listen, there, there are things that you can do. Um, that's just like one little thing I used to do. I don't know if I'm even. Have, have you ever done like the uh, the twenty percent battery pop up? No, I know. Dude, I Actually, think that yes, would I have slap. Done. What's that? So like so in like incorporated in the video, it'll be like a pop up that you normally would get when you're at like twenty percent battery. Like oh, low battery, and then people click it and they like try to get it, but it's a part of the video. Oh shit! And so like not only are people gonna watch it a little longer, but they're gonna click maybe like like it by accident. <laughs> and I think even the algorithms, if you click the video, even if you don't like it, if you click comment, share, like any of those buttons, it'll detect that as a piece of engagement. Yeah, that'll increase the likelihood of it going viral. So, something like that though, I would say. It won't, it probably won't increase the watch time because they're definitely they're not. pausing it. So for me, like the watch time is obviously the most important thing that I care about. And so like what I also do is uh, I add a little transition at the end where it's like a little swoosh and then it does a reverse swoosh going in. So it feels like we're like sucking them in, sucking them back in. What does that mean? Um, so like there's like a, a transition where like um, you start the video from out and like you bring it in. So you're almost yeah. like bringing them into your world. Oh, like literally mm -hmm. the, like the camera angle you're saying. No, like it's the, like it's like a it's like a transition. Okay. Like an effect where I'll like where bring you, bring you like in. you you'll start as small and then like you'll come out in almost no full it's screen. like out and then small. Or opposite. I, opposite. I don't know exactly. Yeah. It's like a very subtle thing. It's not like I'm taking. The whole I, I, I can visualize it. Yeah. Yeah, and so what I do is I'll do the reverse on the end, so it looks like I'm I'm like br put, like putting them back in the world. So it's <laughs> interesting. Like, like these little things, like they're like. I'm like zooming them into me. Like they're going into my world, into my into my video. Yeah. Because instead of preventing them from scrolling, like instead of going up and down, I'm bringing you in. Yeah, and you're like now. Stand. I'm now you're 3D. Now you're in my world. You're yeah. not leaving. You're not going up and down. You're you're you know you're going forward. Do people who, who like where'd you learn? Like, who's telling you this shit? Me, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, you, I'm you talk to Mr. Shit. Beast and be like, was like, yo, no, do this shit. No, I mean like the cutting off at the end, the intro like effects. The tr the rehooks, all that stuff. You're saying like, one thing too, like you fuck up people's names on purpose. Yeah, yeah. That that's probably been my my trademark brand thing, and a lot of people make like memes of me, and like those go viral too. You, you can't say that like you were the first person to ever purposely mispronounce someone's name on social media. I personally have never. What what I've focused on is is something called Easter eggs. So this is what I learned. I think Brian Breach talked about this in like one of the masterminds uh, a while ago. He said. You have to get like do something to make people comment, right? So I think he was like, if you're filming a real estate video, like go outside with your shirt ripped and go in a dumpster, like or whatever, and like do that, or like wear your shirt backwards, or like you know have a you know one eye different color, or like something like that to make people comment. And my version was like, what can I do that's strong enough to make people comment? So like 
I noticed if I think I've tried it before with like a backward shirt or like doing something like that, like it worked, but it wasn't as effective because it wasn't like like me specifically saying something. It's got to piss people. So you're off. like LeBron Jones or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say, I, bro, I have the, the Prince of Doobie, the Prince of Dabby, <laughs> the Prince of Babby, the Prince of Babby. On purpose. All that stuff. <laughs> And people are like, this guy is so, He's so stupid. stupid. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I keep going. Gotcha. And then it's crazy. It's crazy because some people will comment, you guys are so stupid. He's obviously doing this to trick you. That's another That's comment. Engagement. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. another comment. And then you'll comment on that and ask a question and then they'll have to reply yeah. that again. So so it's weird. There's, there's the people that are just <laughs> hating because I'm making the mistake. There are people that are hating because they know what I'm doing. And that's also and com- all yeah, comments yeah, yeah. are treated equally. So I'm yeah. getting like two different sides and it, it really helped. And then um, like those people are like, oh my God, he does it all the time. Like you guys are so obvious. And like the, someone will comment, no, I just think he misspelled. Like, and then there's, there's just a whole dialogue of like people like trying to figure out, did I say it on purpose or did yeah, I not? Like, I, our, our most viral shorts have all been the ones that have, that people have been arguing in the comments. Dude, we have one not where it's us. like- Like uh, we don't comment on anything. Like you talk about the credit cards and stuff. People love fucking credit they, cards. They fight with each other. Like the, the, it's the, cash back in the yeah, yeah. <laughs> 2%. There, there was one where like one guy's like, uh, he like fixes the credit score, credit reports. He's like, oh, I got this one girl a free BBL or something like that. Like she paid like me on a credit card and then like it went to uh, collections, collections and I got it off fought her. it off. Free BBL, Dude, baby. People were loving that shit. And they were like fighting with each other. Like you can't do that. You can do that. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, yeah. a credit collector or whatever. I've been like, doing it for 20 years. No, yeah. I've been doing it for 25 <laughs> yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing it for th- my grandparents did it too. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then someone's like, oh, I had this experience and it did work, but then it went to claims and went back. And yep. then the person's commenting, no, it doesn't go to claims. Dude, someone has to make a full then- just like credit credit card, just YouTube shit, all these it's, shorts. It's just yeah. it goes so far. All, it's it's all like day. controversy. The same thing. People like, just suck with if money. You say in something about like, uh, like Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, if you say something about that, um, you know, there's all these different like trends and movements that if you can like capitalize on it, like you're just tapping into like you're, you're manipulating um, emotions in your comment section. And there's ways to do that where like it's people against each other or people hating on you like or both or both or but like it's it's hard to like get that comment effect when like they love your videos. Like if I really like a video, like really like it, I'll like it. You're not gonna comment. Oh, I I'll like it. This. I'm not yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah. this was beautifully made, and yeah. I'm so impressed with your editing. That's true. I'm, I want to go to the next one. So, like, in this in this social media world, this is why there's so much hate around because hate it's just an anger that fuels inside that you have. They have to let me know that I'm an idiot. They have to. That their mind will not rest. They got nothing better. They to do. will not scroll That's again. I'm a fucking idiot. They yeah. will. They cannot sleep until they let me know how stupid I am, or they cannot sleep until they know until they warn everybody else. That I'm doing this. Yeah. And they, it's just the rage that they have is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like it almost makes you think, how like can you put out genuine content? Like Hermosi, for example, I think he does a really good job of this. Like he actually puts out good stuff and people respond to it positive, both positively and negatively. But I think the thing that he does and guys like Andrew Tate, Luke Belmar, they all do a really good job of this. They are very definitive with the things that they say and they word it in a way that can come across as like very aggressive and that people will will often disagree with, but that, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. how can one do that? Like how, if, if you know, I don't, I don't even know if you know this, how can someone be genuine and get their content across in a way that does still convince people to comment and engage and, and keep watching? Yeah, well, listen, the content that I make, it's not like I'm saying like fake stuff. Right. Right, so it's not like, by me saying McDoodles instead of McDonald's, like you're still getting the you're still getting the whole point. You're not like, being like disingenuous, right? I'm I'm not like making a whole story and saying, oh, by the way, this is it. Like by missing a word, you can still do that. But there there are other ways to do it, right? Um, Tate and Hormozy and those guys, they're just like really, like you said, Extreme. aggressive. Yo, I just did the star. I did the stupidest thing. I just looked in the back of the camera. I was like, why the fuck the screen up? <laughs> 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 so we have fun on these fucking things. You're yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at like episode sixty, whatever. So sixty-three. Minutes, so I cut you yeah. off, boy. All right, where were we at? So we were talking about how Hermosi, Andrew Tate, Luke Belmar, all these guys are really good at making content that gets the comments going, that makes but sense. it still comes across as like genuine. It's polarizing. That that's the easiest way to put it. It's they they create a group and you're they're like if you're not part of this, like it's like the it's pretty much red pill. Like that's what 
I mean, Hormozzi doesn't use that much, but like Iman and all those guys. Luke like, Belmar, the glitch. Join, yeah, join yeah. The, the resistance movement. Iman. We're going we're gonna to get all these people. And then there's like. They just sell you something. You're, you're, yeah. you're saying something that's like so strong. And like people, some people are like really like the government is a scam, all this stuff. And they really believe it. And then like you get like really passionate fans that maybe are willing to comment because they feel so strongly about it. Um, but on the other hand, there are people that are like, this guy's only selling you something or the government isn't a scam. And the, I, I love the government. Like, yeah. <laughs> God they're, crazy. Crazy. yeah. They're like, they're like, this guy's an idiot conspiracy theory. And then like, you're still saying all correct stuff. And like what but, you believe in, but yeah. you're just saying like really polarizing stuff that, you know, a certain amount of people will absolutely like die for you. You know, the other half will absolutely hate your guts and call you scam, exposed, fraud, all that stuff. Yeah. So um, Hormozzi doesn't do that as much, but he does have like certain views on like hard work. Like um, how, like, like realistically how, cause he goes against that kind of formula of pushing people's buttons. He just grew from making really, really good content and a very high volume of it, which is not very common in today's day and age. No, but he also does the whole like, uh, giving value but like you have to wait the whole fucking video for him to say one thing that he said like 17 times yeah yeah, yeah. he's i mean he's just hormozzi is really really smart um a lot of what he does is also not even related to like what he does so like he'll make videos about like what he ordered at subway and like he'll just make a video about like, like he'll just gas it like, him, and, him and his up. family like him and layla like they're fi having an argument like whatever or why he bought a new car like not all of his content is strictly like business 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 so like they're yeah. almost like falling in love with him for his other stuff i mean don't get me wrong his like personality he's he's him he's that guy yeah. right hormozzi is that guy on he's the number one guy on social media for all this stuff so i mean that alone is probably why his stuff does so well i mean he phrases things in ways that nobody has thought of he has his books in, and he explains it really simply and i mean me explaining like that i do things word by word like he does like books and he'll rewrite the book like five or six times and i'm talking about a 30 second video so you can only yeah. imagine the stuff he does i think he just he's just him like there's no hard, there's no easier way to explain it like he just knows exactly what he's doing he's made all the money and he's preaching it and i think the reason why like i mean my stuff is more entertainment based but for a lot of the value people they make it like super red pill is because like they haven't done the kind of stuff that Hormozzi have done. So it's harder to like build that sort of like value. So you, you have to scare the shit out of people pretty so much. So you have to, a lot of people can't relate to it. Yeah. You yeah. have to focus on, on building community in that, in that point. Like you can't say, here's how I made $200 million. Like yeah. you can't do that. But he does. And it still works That's what somehow. I'm saying, because he actually, he, he does yeah. make that money. And a lot of the people that are making his money don't do social media. Yeah. So I think that's why I think he's like, uh, like with the Luke Belmar, the Iman, like he's just all the way up here when it comes to like actual business stuff. And I think he just explains it in a way that's super simple, super like fifth grade reading level. And he's one of the only people that is at that number that's doing the volume that he's doing that's growing because he's just investing a lot in it. And he's just one of the only like sincere real guys in the game i mean all the guys are great but like he's just he's different yeah i remember one of his best videos he said he said here's how to add 15 percent to your business without changing a thing change your billing cycles from monthly to every 28 days because there's 13 cycles of 28 days as opposed to 12 months yeah so he's like boom you just added 15 percent of revenue to your business without changing anything other than like a couple days shifted from when you bill your client. That's real though. Yeah. And so many people were so pissed at that. They're like, oh, well, you're going to pay your, you're going to pay your employees less. You're going to bill your clients more than they would have otherwise had to pay. But it's not wrong. hundred like, percent. He's not, he's not like, it's smart. As fuck. Like, it's, it's smart. And the thing is there are going to be half the people who are like, this is amazing. I'm about to make an extra 15%. It's, it's totally legal. It's totally correct. It's smart. Yeah, you run your business other people you are gonna say you're scamming you're this but there's that's with everything like you could say like just make a few tiktoks oh no but that doesn't work anymore you can never oh, the, the, pro, the program doesn't work so like there's always going to be the, those haters um but i mean a lot of his stuff because he's so successful he does have a lot of polarizing views himself like not like red pill and like like um iman Ghazi stuff but yeah. he does have like you should drive a really crappy car you should, you know, live in a closet or like whatever his thing is. And like, although it's not an, like a crazy 
like concept like that's saying you're going to be a billionaire like hyping up like the red pill stuff it's still a pretty polarizing statement that again can build a community that people that love him people that don't yeah so speaking of hermosi he's like super against the things like biohacking and it's kind of funny because he goes against the grain in that regard but you're into biohacking i know we are and a lot of people are in business a lot of people aren't like there's a lot of incredibly successful people that roll out of bed they eat shit they drink like they're alcoholics and they still manage to run a successful business. So if you had to give a tip to someone who's looking to get into biohacking, but they don't want to do everything all at once, they just start, want to start in one place, what would you suggest that they do? Yeah. First of all, I would say, I think Hormozzi says this all the time, you don't need to do all this stuff to run a good business. It's the same thing. Like there are people that will watch a five hour Andrew Tate podcast and think that they're working. Right. Like you don't need it. You're not working, man. You're not. Yeah. So like if you just roll out of bed, and you do what's required, just like what Hermosi says, if you do what's required, it doesn't matter if you drink, if you smoke, if you do all the stuff, like if you just do, it's input and output. If you do the right input, you will get the right output. Like success and money, it doesn't care if you're a good person, it doesn't care if you wake up at 5 a.m. or if you wake up at 10 a.m., it doesn't care. As long as you do the inputs required, you will get the outputs. But what I will say is obviously it can help making it easier, right? Not saying like it's impossible, but I'm sure if you're an alcoholic, it's probably harder to run a business. Yeah. If you're sleeping for 12 hours and like you're going to sleep late, like it's obviously harder. So these things can definitely help. And obviously business aside, doing things like this just make you feel better. Like it's just, yeah. it's not even about the money and about the, the, the business. Like you just feel better. It impacts all of your life. Like you just can't perform not only when it comes to business, but like with your friends, your family, your mind's always foggy. So it's, it definitely helps, but I do want to put it out. It's just, it's not like mandatory where if you miss your cold plunge in the morning, you're going to hell you and you can't run a business. Yeah. Like, I think that's like the distinction that I think we have to make. But first thing that I would say, I think Luke Belmar talks about this a lot is your water um, and fluoride and all that stuff. I mean, there's tons of podcasts about that. Fluoride calcifies your pineal gland, third eye relationship with God, all that Spirituality, other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Not good. Um, plastic water bottles are terrible. Um, the easiest thing that I could probably say is, uh, start with your toothpaste. Um, start fluoride with fluoride free, fluoride free toothpaste, uh, aluminum free deodorant for guys and girls. It's so hard finding a brand. I have one. I still haven't found the best one. Um, even the toothpaste I use hello personally, the fluoride free, but even that one has like Na native's pretty decent. I think pretty sure it has a few like things. It's, it definitely doesn't have fluoride, but Listen, what I've tried like 10 toothpastes, honestly, because I love this stuff and all of them are just so bad that like, I, like it's just not worth it. In, like, what, in what regards taste? It's, it tastes like there's no foam. It's just this like salty, like it's, it's gross. Yeah. And at that point, I'd, like, I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather just not brush my teeth at that point, you know? <laughs> so I do some, like, as long as it's fluoride free, I think you're good enough. You know, I have to go too crazy with it. Aluminum free deodorant. Again, there's fragrance, all that other bad stuff in deodorant um, and, and colognes. But if you can get rid of those two main things, I think you, you'll you literally be just like read labels. Like nobody reads labels, just like read a label and know what some of the ingredients mean yeah. or at least what the bad ingredients are, because there's only a handful of them. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's a few big ones to look out for. There's also smaller ones. I use an app called Bobby Approved. I don't know if you've heard of it. You just go to a grocery store and you scan it and it'll tell you like it'll highlight in red all the bad stuff. Um, and so you can do that. It won't do it with like water because like doesn't count microplastics into right, the right. ingredients. There's things that aren't on the label. Yeah. But that's what I would say. I use Hello. I use a company called, uh, I think it's called Old Man Jacks or something like with Jacks for the deodorant. Um, those two are huge. Uh, water, 70% of our body is water. How are you not giving it the highest quality of water? Like some people are like going crazy saying, oh, like I don't want to spend money on water. Like just don't buy it, an extra Supreme t-shirt every month. Like it's not yeah, that hard. Yeah, like yeah. some people will like buy all these fancy trips, these fancy Rolexes, the newest iPhone. Like, but they won't take care of their health. Your body is, is like 70% of water. Like why are you not giving it the best? Like a cold yeah. plunge. Like I don't spend things like i wear the same black t-shirt probably since i met you in like 2020 like obviously i replaced it but like yeah, it's the yeah, same yeah. champs uh csg black shirt basic clothes the watch i have was given to me as a gift like i don't really spend money like that 
And so all of it goes into back into the business into new content styles or whatever. And then into health, like those are my two main things. I got the whoop band. Obviously I've been using this for a few years now. Um, but there's, there's a lot of things that it's, it's simple changes, right? Like for, for example, like I wear an eye, ma eye mask, right. Or with a blackout curtain, like yeah. this is what Hormozy actually made a video about this. Like all these like 20, like sleep tricks or whatever nobody's asking you to like go and avoid every single seed oil. Yes, you could do that, but like start small, right? You don't have to go crazy and change your diet and start fasting for 18 hours a, a day. Buy a $20 sleep mask. You don't have to do that. Yeah. What I did is I, I bought like, yeah, it was like 20 bucks. I tried a few of them out. I threw out the ones I didn't like, and then I just bought 10 of them. Now I have one in my suitcase, one in my house, one in my fiance's house, one, like I just have all of them and I figured it out and now it's good. And now my sleep automatically improves by five ten percent because of some because of a decision i made two years ago yeah sleeping mask um i started using nose strips i don't know if you guys do that yeah yeah, yeah. Been dude i always wake up like with a stuffy nose and i started using those it helped a little bit but it's still not like perfect and but i also have a little bit of a deviated septum so that's another thing i use the extra strength ones so maybe interesting yeah it's i think there's it's that one breathe, brand right breathe, like, right yeah, know, yeah, Amazon, yeah 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 I, I use like the regular i actually ones. I, I accidentally got the extra strength ones and i just use it it's better but yeah that stuff um i started to get into mouth taping mouth, a little bit i've seen i've seen those um does that do shit well m the thing about mouth breathing is that it actually changes the shape of your jaw over a long because like you're like you know, and when like, you sleep, yeah, like over a long enough time horizon, like you see people that have like those, like, I don't know how to like the turtle faces a little bit where like they're like droop down, mm -hmm. like their nose, like, and like, like you can or like, like a double see. chin. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. And so like it, it changes the shape of your jaw. And also when you're breathing from your mouth, you're getting like all this bacteria um, that come into your mouth. That's why you feel like a little dry sometimes. Um, no, this is like a better filter. So overall breathing from your mouth just sucks. And so if you. What I do is I get the nose strip, increase your oxygen by 31%, and then you tape the mouth. So now you've closed the bad and you've double opened the good. And now, you know, it's it's better breathing. And that's easy and cheap. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, everyone's like, oh my God, you need to have all these fancy things. Like, same thing, weighted like blanket. Yeah. Good. I mean, <laughs> I look like an idiot when I wear it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I have yeah. the full set. I have the eye mask. I have the nose strip. <laughs> I, have, I also have earplugs sometimes. I have the mouth tape. Like, I look like I'm a hostage. Yeah. Like, literally. And like, <laughs> like, literally, like, before, thank God I have a girlfriend now. But if I didn't, like, I don't know, you know, biohacking, uh, you, not very it's, sexy. It, it's a different breed. Yeah. It's a different <laughs> breed of people. But for me, it's worth it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just a few things. I know you gotta get out of here soon. It's 3.05. I don't want you missing your fucking flight. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, so, so biohacking is something that helps you feel good so that you can perform better generally. Yeah. There's also things that you've probably in incorporated in terms of like your routine, right? So those things that doesn't take a lot of time, it doesn't take a lot of effort. So those are like low effort, th low effort things to feel better so that you can perform better. But there's things that can require a little bit more effort or take more time, right? Like you got a cold plunge, you got, yep. you know, your gym session, maybe you have your morning routine, you read, you take notes, like what are some of those things that you do? And that generally you think that people should do yeah i mean cold plunge i've been using for the past few months when i was in new york i used to take cold showers and so in the freezing weather so yeah. i was already used to it by the time i got it and you know business was doing a lot better so i decided to just invest in the edge tub that you have as well um what i would say i started doing this only a few weeks ago but i started turning off my phone like 30 minutes before bed and it sounds so cliche and i'm like this is so stupid like if if it's on like black and white mode then like there's no like melatonin, so we should be good, right? Right. But like, I saw this on Twitter. Someone was like, "How are you supposed to park a car going 70 miles an hour?" So like, when you're on uh, TikTok or whatever, like you're you're just processing all this um, all this content, even if it's not dopamine because there's no colors or whatever. Right. It's still like you're just you're halfway processing there. so much information, and then you're like, "Okay, good night." Like, how how is your brain supposed to pause? So you what can't, I do? Like, shut off. Um, 30 minutes before bed. I thought it was so cliche, but my sleeping score went from like 69% to 95, 96% on whoop within one day that I started doing that. So I, um, I only use the, the red light. If I need to use my computer for like work related, there's an app, uh, on the Mac and windows called Iris. And what it'll do is it'll actually turn your whole screen red or the whole screen green, depending on uh, the different settings. And Personally, I've hated using the blue light blockers. They're just so bulky and, you know, if I'm like laying down on. on the side, yeah. it's like, it's annoying. So I was just like, I saw someone talk about it. I got it and I just 
right when it's like getting late, just boom, one button. Now the whole screen's green. So that's what I use for that. Um, again, very simple things. Um, I journal before I go to sleep. So again, talking about like parking the car a little bit, turn off the phone, take a shower, whatever. And then I will just journal. Like, what did I do today? There's no like, thing where I have to say 10 things I'm grateful for affirmations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be a billionaire. Like none of that stuff. It's just basic. If I want to talk about, uh, today, like what I did or something on my mind that I'm trying to figure out for business, I'll jot that down. If I'm, you know, thanking God for all my blessings, boom, do that. There's no, like, I have to do this. Like I, I went to sleep pretty late cause I was at different events the past few days. So those, I wrote like two lines. Like I had a really good day today. I did this, this, and this want to think about this tomorrow boom done but like that consistency and just giving yourself a second to take because reflect oh, yeah because a lot of people they will go to sleep okay let's say you do the 30 minutes before with your phone right you put your phone and you take a shower you still have those those shower thoughts those lingering thoughts and you go to sleep and you're this is the first time your mind has been able to think without your phone for the whole day so now your mind is racing now you can't go to sleep for two hours because you're like Wait, what did I do today? Okay, what I have this tomorrow? Okay, so I have all these plans and oh, should I start this business? Oh, I saw this post. Should I call him tomorrow? You have yeah. all these things. So how are, you, how are you supposed to go to sleep? So just, I call it brain dump. Just dump it out. Whatever you're thinking about. It could take five minutes. You could have not a lot on your mind today. You could, you could write two pages. Like it doesn't matter. Just just dump it out. So the, the car is parked and then I just read a few minutes, like five, 10 minutes even just to like, again, reading, you know, when you're in bed, it helps you fall asleep, get in that little tired state, put the book, knockout that's helped me a lot the the reading like i have the i had the whoop i also have i currently have the aura ring yeah and it helped a lot like just turn off your phone and read before you go to bed and it it there's something called attention residue when you transition from one thing to another and if the last thing you see is your phone and you try to go straight to bed you still have you're still thinking about the things that were on your phone or that your to-do list if you have like a you know read a book for 10 15 minutes there's a transitional period where you get to just like forget all that stuff and you're just focused on maybe the things you're you're reading or just sl slow your brain down, get tired. Yeah, and most people don't think all day. Yeah. People are on their phone all day. So how are you going to have time to think about life? That's why they call it shower thoughts because if you don't bring your phone in the shower, that's the first time you're thinking all day. For yourself, yeah. You're always, you're, you're either reading, even if it's work, you're doing work stuff, you have all these plans, you have a calendar, meetings, meetings, meetings. Like when have you taken 15 minutes and you're like, what am I doing with my life? Like, where do I want to go? What did I do today? What was good? What was bad? And when do you think of that? Right when your body go to sleep, because that's the only time with your eyes closed, almost like a meditative state where you're yeah. able to start thinking about that. So those small things, I think could definitely help. I love cold plunge. Um, I want to get a sauna. I'm going to do that. Um, I think tracking is important. Um, just for me, I used to have it without because I'm like, all right, I figured it out after two years. Right, but, right. but I realized that like when I want to test these things, like the nose strips and the mouth tape. It's and, like split tests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it is. Like, how are you supposed to know? Like, you kind of feel like you don't feel like wake up in the morning. If you're 95%, you spring out of bed. Like, it doesn't right, work yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, there's some things where like you just need to know your your biometrics to know how you're recovering. So I'll try, okay, well, how, what if I go to sleep earlier, but I don't, uh, but I don't like journal? Or what if I go to sleep earlier, but I shower in the morning and then I don't read, like just doing all this stuff like, okay, mouth tape. Okay. I tried it for a few days and it went up 1%, but it's kind of uncomfortable. Is it worth it or is it not? Like it's hard to make those changes without having numbers to back it up. So that's why I do it. It's not mandatory, but I think if you're really into the biohacking, it could definitely help. Yeah. And a lot of people like they can't, they can't just roll out bed and work. They're usually not productive. And so the whole, the whole thing with a morning routine is like it's not even the benefit you get from the morning routine. It's the fact that it primes you for a productive workflow. So like if that 20, 30 minutes allows you to work for the next three hours productively, whereas waking up, rolling out of bed and going straight to work allows you to work at 70% capacity, then it's worth spending that 15, 20 minutes. And you feel you know? better. Yeah. Who cares? We're talking about work. Who cares about work? You just right. literally live better. Yeah. Like everyone's talking about, oh, so you can optimize, so you can close better in your meetings. Like that's all great. But like, you just live a more fulfilled life. Like you're just happier. Like, you know, let's say you were uh, in a bad mood and like you're about to snap at your girlfriend. Like you just having that extra like bit of energy to like and, and brain fog or unbrain fog to like not snap. Yeah. That could be a difference between a fight for that goes on for days versus like just taking that extra breath. Like that's the, it's, it's all in the margins. Like those small little things could help like with positive relationships versus like going over the edge and yelling at that person or, you know, cursing someone out, like it's, it's those small things that like the brain fog kind of like 
hurts. It hurts yeah. you from being able to do that. Yeah. Is there anything that one of the last questions I'm going to ask you, is there anything that you've tried subscribing to for in this biohacking space or daily routine that you found just like didn't do it for you and you tried it for a little bit and you just cut it out, cut it off? That's a good question. Um, I think probably the mouth taping personally, it, it did work. Obviously, it just wasn't comfortable for me. Um, one thing I will say that I forgot to add is weighted blankets. That mm. is great. If you guys don't have it, you should get there's different ones. I just bought like a few. Did you get hush? No, there was one called Barabi and another one called Luxome. I'm trying both of them. I know Luxome. Again, man. split testing. That's what I do. Like, if I'm going to use this blanket for the next three years, like, I might as well spend an extra hundred bucks, get a better one, and then just return the previous one or throw it out or whatever. Like, some people are like, oh my God, like, I just bought this one and it doesn't work. Like, maybe it's just the specific one you bought. Like, they try on a no strip and they're like, it doesn't work. Like, it's uncomfortable. It's like, well, there's 50 other good ones that you can try. Right. Like it obviously works, you know, not saying everything is going to be for you. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's anyone specifically. I mean, like when it comes to like the the fluoride and, and like the uh, the aluminum, like it's hard to quantify that. Yeah. Like when I drink spring water versus like all the overheated plastic water that most people drink, it's like, how are you supposed to know? Especially like, immediately. Like it's something kind of long term. You yeah. just have to believe in it and know right. that like you are doing how like eating like same thing when you with all the seed oils like yeah yeah sometimes when you eat like a bunch of fries and all that stuff like you'll, you'll feel, feel like, shit. like shit but at the same time like you know it's not gonna like affect you now it's more like in five years from now when you're eating it every single day yeah so you almost like have to think long term like not every single one of these is gonna give you like an immediate result and i think also sometimes it's it's some of those that don't give you the immediate result that actually give you the best results long term like the water clean um the fluoride i actually also have a filter on my shower so uh, we actually absorb fluoride uh or in all those toxic chemicals like six times faster when when it actually goes on our skin and so a lot of people are like oh i'm drinking spring water on with a bottle reverse osmosis i'm good right no what are you washing with your face what are you using in the shower right brushing you're, your teeth with right you're, you're going right you're putting that in your like in your mouth also it's like when you go to the pool chlorine messes your hair all that stuff like there's a lot to this game, but again, to, to make it simple, fluoride, aluminum, you can try seed oils. Again, it's very difficult. It's, you, it's hard. Like, it's, dude, I was going grocery shopping, just trying to find snacks. Every single fucking snack, uh, seed oil, canola oil, vegetable, like something has everything has oil in it. How messed up it is. Yeah. And it's, it's so hard to do because literally everything is made out of it. And to be honest, what I do is I do it six days a week. I have one day like the the sabbath i just relax and i just allow myself to enjoy then the rest like it, it's the 80 20 rule right yeah, you know what yeah. i mean like that's personally what i do um but yeah I, I think just don't overcomplicate it i mean you'll find way more biohacking videos on on youtube like i'm pretty much a collection and just downloading all these different videos trying stuff out myself but yeah take it one step at a time fluoride toothpaste it's like you're gonna order on amazon anyway just click a different link yeah, yeah. i'm not asking you to go to siberia into a convenience store and buy <laughs> toothpaste like just yeah. go on amazon it's one link versus another you can subscribe so it comes to your house like it's really easy yeah just like put good stuff in and on your body and yeah. sleep good yeah i always say like make it easy to do the good stuff right like put your phone away or like just do auto order for the toothpaste right auto order for the water like make it easy to do this stuff like if you make it hard then you won't do it like that's why when i have the journal i put it next to my bed right what if like my phone i don't want to use my phone okay put it in the other room it's like really small stuff like that um like weighted blanket only have the weighted blanket like don't yeah. have other ones or like the nose strip put the nose strip right where you brush your teeth so you don't have to go to the other room and then come back like these small little steps just try to make it as easy as possible to do it and then it's it's really the same thing like whether you use non-fluoride or fluoride, you're still brushing your teeth. It's not like the toothpaste is yeah, so hard yeah, to yeah. get out. Like it's the same, yeah. it's the same stuff, just picking different products. And so yeah, I think yeah. educating people is, is just so important on this stuff. Yeah. Shit. How, last question. How, how many views cumulatively do you think you've generated across social media or the people that you've consulted for? Over a billion? Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. That's the title. 
The man with over a billion views there on social go. media. Yes, <laughs> I'm perfect. That's funny. So where can people find you on social media? Like uh, the, the channels that you want to be found? Because yeah. I'm sure there's a couple you got some some sauce on. You want to keep hidden. Yeah. So uh, my main channel on YouTube is just called ROM at ROM. It was actually crazy. They were doing um, back in the day, like I think over a year ago, they were launching YouTube handles. Yep, yep. And so I was in the YouTube partner program at the time for shorts. They had a shorts community. They're like, this is about a launch. And I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. So I was like one of the first people to get access and I got at ROM. Damn, R-O-M. that's nuts. And I was like, I, I texted my girlfriend, like, you don't realize how crazy this is. I just asset. got it. Yeah, I just got it. Like, I knew it was going to be big. So it's just at ROM on YouTube, uh, on Instagram. It's just ROM Revive and TikTok and all those other places. We'll have it uh, linked in the, the, the description of the video. Yeah. No, man. Appreciate you coming out. This is sick. Yeah, I learned yeah. a lot. Bro, Usually with the biohacking stuff, I don't know shit. I just yeah. listen. I listen because, like, uh, I've only learned about this like three, four episodes back. In Miami, we did a lot of this uh, seed oil yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, it. it's a whole world in itself. But the, the social media stuff, I think, is pretty sick, though. I yeah. think there's a lot of avenues. Lot of Honestly, it's, it's easy easier for the a random person to just start and do. You know what I mean? Like, anyone can just pick up a phone and just fucking record it. Yeah, like, e-commerce is tough. Social media, like, you can do anything, yeah. have any skill, like, and just record yourself and post it. And, like, sure. you'll figure out what people like. And, sure. and, and just do it to document your own stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Not even and on our end, just make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Always got to say that shit at the end. Yeah. If anyone gets to the end, you know we love you. Yeah. And we got three great sponsors that are linked in the description of this video that if you're an e-commerce brand or if you're in a tangential or complementary industry, you're going to want to check them out. We do our due diligence with them. We use most of them. So definitely check those out. Shout, Shout out to out all of sponsors. our sponsors. 100%. Anyways, yeah, catch go. you guys on the we'll next one. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace.